Upon a starlit shore in the outer realms of oblivion, there is a tension in the air. A band of alchemists from all across Tamriel have come to this far-flung land to search for a cure. A cure to that plague that torments all, a cure for death itself. They toil away in their crystalline caves, conducting studies, experiments, and rituals to unleash the power of this realm. But uh, they are not alone, for there is another group here. A crew of undead void pirates sailing the skies in their flying ships, here to find their own cure for their slow decay, greedy to stop the march of death that withers their bones. At odds over a mutual goal, the two are about to come to blows. And above it all, in a tower of obsidian, the lord of this realm, or so he claims, keeps a watchful eye as this conflict unfolds. But his is not the only prying eye, for there's mysteries here to be unraveled, and not all is as it seems. This is the setting of today's Mold the Day, for today we're covering the second mod of Morrowind Modding Madness 2023, an epic tale of far-flung realms, warring factions, and a quest to defeat death itself. For today, we're covering Lord of Rebirth by the Twinkling Twilights, a team composed of Billy Fighter, Katya Carell, Anne Rohal, Ruffin Van Gaar, and Dungeon Daddy Seelaw. Coming into the 7th Annual Morrowind Modding Madness competition, the Twinkling Twilights were the team to watch, and I dare say they've delivered. A bit of a remix of the 3rd place winning team from 2022, uh, Billy Fighter, Kaya Carell, and Ruffin Van Gaal all worked on the investigations at Tel Uris as part of the Dreamy Dreamers in last year's competition. Uh, one of the most visually striking and creative entries from that event. Adding the immense talents of Van Rohal and Seelof into the mix, I dare say Lord Rebirth eclipses even the fantastical investigations at Tel Uris in terms of quality, polish, verticality, and adventure. But uh, enough hype for now, and let's just let's jump into the showcase. And uh, your adventure begins in the tiny village of Alvalothi, where, just outside of town, uh, you'll encounter an Imperial Battle Mage, and a mysterious game. Greetings, Traveler. This Battle Mage is the sole survivor of an expedition to uncover a ring of illegal Doomer smugglings, allegedly operating out of this game. But his fellow battle mages were killed by some terrifying monstrosity. Should you agree to aid his quest, uh, you'll accompany him into the caverns below and face this strange abomination head on. And uh, by the by, uh, most of the new characters that you'll meet in Lordery Birth have some new voice acting, by actual voice actors, with simple quest readings and some scripted dialogue. After you defeat the beast, uh, you'll discover a long forgotten data shrine. And your companion, intent upon his investigation, will cast a spell, with unexpected results, opening a portal into a realm of oblivion. Jumping through, you'll find yourself in an otherworldly realm, in the midst of a battle, as the sounds of clashes rain from below. Mages and alchemists beset by strange Duma machines, centurions doing battle with Atronox of Blood. Panicked voices ringing out, and all the while a pirate ship hovers above the fray. This, this is your first introduction to the Luminous Vale, a splinter realm of oblivion, a rocky set of isles set upon a sea of stars, a grand cosmos playing to a landscape painted in hues of purple, grey, and blue, where pirate airships with their ethereal green glow can be found plying the sky and great crystals, giant bones, and blood-red trees dot the lands. This first taste of the Luminous Vale will have you meet a number of new characters, alchemists from around Tamriel that have traveled here to find true resurrection. No mere necromancy, but an end to death itself. This is but one of the factions that you'll meet in the Luminous Vale. And they're a band of unique personalities, could be worse, each with a few voice lines. Speaking. Their aims are to finish their projects in peace. But to do that, they must first deal with the undead pirate attacks. 
and to accomplish that, they're going to need your help. At first, you'll be asked to perform a handful of tasks, helping with various experiments, studies, and summonings, escorting a mage to a giant skeleton, feeding a blood adrenal, and defeating summon trees come to life, are just a few of the quests you embark upon with the Alchemist Coalition. But they're not the only faction on this island. And on the other side of the isle, anchored at a hidden cove, you'll find the Undead Void Pirates. A lifetime of plundering, riches, and necromancy have left them decayed, mere husks and bones of what were once mortal men. Still, they long to extend their own lives, to taste once more of flesh and muscle, a task for which they'll need a cure for death. One the alchemists alleged to have. What brings you here? Hence the root to their conflict. And should you agree to help, you'll find yourself going on a cinematic quest, learning more about this realm and gathering artifacts for this band of pirates. Uh, while you can play both quest lines at the same time, eventually uh, you will need to choose a sign. Alchemist or pirate for the final conflict. Or... Maybe there's another option. For those who keep an eye out, uh, there is a way to resolve things peacefully. Uh, but I I won't really get into that too much here, you know, just for the sake of avoiding spoilers. Uh, now, of all that said, uh, Lord of Rebirth is a breathtakingly beautiful and atmospheric mod, uh, containing, arguably, how is the content? From glorious dungeon dives of verticality to new adventures, good encounters, some utterly stylish new outfits and character designs, and not to mention new weapons, artifacts, and treasures for you to find. There is an absolute ton of stuff jam-packed into Lord of Rebirth. It is one of the largest mods from this year's Madness competition, and it truly displays the ingenuity, the creativity, and the talent of this amazing group of modders. The lands of the Luminous Vale have been masterfully rendered, providing an environment that's both utterly alien and uniquely distinct from anything else that we've seen in Morrowind. And uh, the dungeons and locations are just... Uh, my, I'm almost at a loss for words. The verticality is just so exquisite, the atmosphere is so rich, the epic vistas and scenes so numerous. You'll find them in practically every single location. From the labs and living quarters of the alchemists to the pirate's cove, to the not so little side dungeons with their just grand giant open spaces, to the towers of the central palace and beyond. The scale here just, you know, really baffles the mind. I, I mean, we've gotten somewhat just used to the idea of massive mods from Madness. But as a reminder, the competition is only a month long. The team here had only a single month. You know, 31 days to build this entire mod, using the themes that were revealed on October 1st. And uh, as a reminder, uh, those themes were Scores of Magic and Decay and Rebirth. And not only did they build a massive mod utilizing these two themes, but they did so in an utterly unique and creative way, embracing the creative, well, madness that is the heart and soul of this competition. And now, I do just want to linger a bit on the locations and environments found in Lord of Rebirth, because this mod is just chock full of beautiful, gorgeous, verticality inducing, exquisitely detailed and decorated locales for you to find, explore, and occasionally fight through. And take a look at the labs and living quarters for the alchemist faction here. Look at this amazing design! Giant mist-filled caverns lined with glowing orbs, branching paths leading to wireframe Duma structures. The glow of Duma lamps just mixing with the ambient fog to create a scene of just such atmospheric delights as to send shivers down your spine. I have no doubt that this masterfully built scene is a result of the combination of the extremely talented level design skills of Seenloff, Katya Corel, and Billy Fighter. The verticality is a trademark of Mr. Dungeon Daddy, aka Seenloff. While Katya Corel is the undeniable master of cozy atmospheric charm, 
And a devil knows, there's quite a bit of that here. And a billy fighter is no stranger to dungeon layout and design. After all, he made one of the best dungeon mods of 2021 with Silent Island. A combined, it's just, it's little wonder that Lord Rebirth ended up with just so many breathtaking locations. And it's not just the big locations either. The tiny interiors, like the Void Pirate ships, are also just gorgeously and atmospherically detailed and decorated. And which is what you get when you have caught your Corel on a team. Just every single part of this mod is just absolutely stunning. Uh, even many of the side dungeons are just an absolute joy to behold. Unlike the Crimson Falls, a technically small dungeon in terms of the number of enemies, but one with a tremendous sense of verticality, with great falls leading down into a giant open air pit with those red leaved trees. An absolutely just gorgeous scene. Or the Crystal Mines, which while lacking as much of that verticality, it does have quite a bit of atmosphere, with dwarf inspectors just hunting the acid filled crystal lined pathway. And then there's the Obsidian Tower itself, a great vertical vista going straight up, then up, and up, with balconies each covered in dripping detail, ivy and vines flowing down the steps overlooking the tower below, light streaming in from the purple glass stained windows. What a scene! What a visual feast for the eyes! And of course, all this comes with a plethora of new assets. From furniture to architecture to flora and fauna. New creatures, new robes, new weapons, and more. At Kaya Corel did the concept art that was used as a basis for many of the new assets and locations. At which you can see here. And I must say, it is... It's some pretty great concept art. You know, Kaya is an extremely talented artist. And uh, here you can see some of the new items, including a new set of rare blue obsidian weapons uh, that you can find across the Luminous Veil. Uh, several of the new items and weapons were created by Anne Rohal, and one of the community's most prolific asset creators. While Ruffin Vanguard made many of the new iconic outfits for each of the mods more unique NPCs, and not to mention the new creatures, uh, which I must say are uh, certainly a highlight. A Billy Fighter also made many of the new assets, uh, particularly flora and environmental pieces. And together, the Twinkling Twilights just uh, really had their bases covered. Besides asset creation, uh, both Ruffin Rangar and Billy Fighter also have experience with quest writing and design. And it uh, combined with all the level design experience, uh, that just led to a truly massive mod with a fair number of quests in unique looking locations involving just a ton of dungeon delving. The only possible complaint that one might have here is that uh, the pirate faction is uh, maybe just a little light on quest content, you know, compared to the more fleshed out alchemist faction. But uh, because you can do quests for both at the same time, you know, there's still a lot to play through here, uh, regardless of who you end up siding with. But in any event, uh, this is honestly one of the biggest mods of 2023, and uh, certainly one of the biggest mods of Commander Madness. Uh, there is just so much content here, so much environmental detailing, it, it, is, it is an absolute blast to play through and experience for yourself. I, I really can't recommend it enough, and uh, there is no question it is one of the best mods in 2023. And uh, given that 2023 is a record breaking year for the modern community, uh, that is really saying something. But uh, anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's the end of our showcase. So, as always, I've been your host, Rick Elf Guy. Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.